This is part 10 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between input and colon input selectors. So what's the difference? Colon input selector is going to select all input elements. First, let's understand what are input elements. Look at the form here. We've got two text boxes, two radio buttons, three check boxes, a drop-down list, a multi-line text box, and a submit button. Here is the HTML that gives us that UI. I'll have this entire HTML available on my blog in case you need it. Now, to get these text boxes, notice that we are using input element and the type is text. To get the radio buttons, again, notice that we are using input element, but the type is radio. For check boxes, we are using input element, but the type is checkbox. For the submit button, notice that the element is input and the type is submit. So, for the text boxes, radio button, check boxes, and for the submit button, we're using input element, and the type varies depending on the type of element. To get this drop-down list, we're using select element, and to get the multi-line text box, we're using text area element. So, if you look at this colon input selector, this is going to select all input elements, that is, all elements with an input tag. And in addition to that, it is also going to select all text area elements, all select elements, that is, the drop down list, all button elements, all image elements, etc. Whereas this input selector, that is, without a colon in front of it, this is only going to select those elements with an input tag. So, let's look at that in action. So now what we want to do is retrieve the values from all these elements and display them in a JavaScript alert. So let's see how to do that. So within this jQuery ready function, let's use input selector. So we are using the input selector without colon. So this should only select those elements which have the input tag and I'm going to use this each function which is going to iterate through each item uh, in the collection that is returned by this selector. And then as we iterate through, we want to execute some code. So I'm going to use an anonymous function here. And I'm going to use dollar this. So this is going to refer to an item that is within this collection, which we are currently iterating over. And then I'm going to call val function. So what is this val function going to do? It's going to return the value from that HTML element. And let's alert that using JavaScript alert function. All right, so let's save these changes. And when we reload, look at that. First, we get the value from the first text box, which is John. Once I click OK, we get the value from this text box, Major. Then we should get the drop down, I mean, radio button values, that is male and female. Followed by that, we should get the checkbox values. So JavaScript, jQuery, and C Sharp. Now, since we are using only the input selector without a colon in front of it, this should not select this element, that is the drop-down list and text area elements. So now, once I click OK, it should only get the value from the button control, skipping the drop-down list and the multi-line text box. So once I click OK, look at that. We get the value from the button. Once I click OK, it's over. OK, now let's change the selector to colon input. So what is this going to do? This is going to select everything, OK, including this drop-down list and multi-line text box. So let's save these changes. And when we reload this, so we get the values from the text boxes, John and Major, then from the radio buttons, then from the check boxes. OK, now once I click OK, we should get the selected value from the drop-down list, USA. Once I click OK, we should get the value from the multi-line text box, which is I'm a senior .NET developer with 10 years. And then once I click OK on that, we should get the value of the button. OK, so basically, colon input selector is going to return us all input elements, all text area elements, select elements, button elements, image elements, etc., whereas input selector without a colon, this is only going to give us elements with an input tag. Now, let's say we want to retrieve only the values from these two text boxes, okay, first name and last name. Now, there are two ways we can do that. So I can use colon input, so this is going to return us all elements on the form, but then I can use 
you know, where type equals text. So what is this going to do? This is going to filter the items and only return us the text boxes. Okay, so when we save the changes and when we reload, look at that, we get John and we get Major. Now we can also achieve that without using this colon in front of it. So let's save these changes and when we reload, look at that, we get John and Major. Okay, so both the ways we get the same output. So which one is better for performance? Input type equals text or colon input type equals text? Input type equals text is better for performance over colon input type equals text. Why is that? That's because colon input type equals text. It's going to scan, you know, all the input elements, text area elements, selects, images, etc. Whereas input type equals text, this will scan only input elements, you know, that have an input tag. So obviously the list to scan when you use this input selector without a colon will be shorter. That means to get you know elements with an input tag, it is always better to use input type equals text over colon input type equals text. Thank you for listening and have a great day.